Let's face it, monitoring and alerting is really hard. And it's especially hard with Kubernetes. Now, the idea itself isn't hard, but setting it up for your Kubernetes cluster is a challenge. And setting up Prometheus and Grafana for your Kubernetes cluster can be time consuming and cumbersome. And it's easy to get wrong. But luckily, if you're using Rancher, it's the exact opposite. If you're using Rancher, you have access to an open source alerting and monitoring system that'll help you gain visibility into the darkest corners of your Kubernetes cluster. And in just a few clicks, you could have Grafana, Prometheus, an alert manager, and more. With Rancher's solution, you can monitor processes within Kubernetes, individual components, states, deployments, pods, and more with Prometheus. And then you can define alerts based on metrics. And you can visualize and create custom dashboards using Grafana. And they've also included predefined templates that are already set up for you. And then you can configure alert notifications using email, Slack, PagerDuty, using Prometheus and Alert Manager. And there's so much included, I could go on for about 10 minutes, but let's hop right in. Now first, you're gonna need a cluster running Rancher. Now, if you need help with that, I've got lots of tutorials on Rancher, K3S, and Kubernetes. And if you're gonna do this, the tutorial with K3S is probably a good place to start. And after you've got your cluster running, you'll wanna launch the Rancher UI. Now at first, we'll see the quote unquote old UI. We're going to use the new UI to access this feature. And that's as simple as clicking on Cluster Explorer. And once you land here, you'll be greeted with your cluster dashboard. And this is the new UI. Once we're here, we'll wanna go over to this dropdown over here to the Cluster Explorer. You'll see a few options here that we can choose. We're gonna choose Apps and Marketplace, and this is where we install Rancher apps. Once we get here, we'll see lots of apps that we can install into Rancher. You'll see ones that are Rancher provided, and then you'll see one from their partners. Let's go ahead and filter this down to just Rancher apps. And once we're here, we'll see lots of apps for Rancher. Now, we wanna pick the monitoring app. And what is the monitoring app? Well, it says here, collect several related Helm charts, Grafana dashboards, and Prometheus rules combined with documentation and scripts to provide easy to operate an end-to-end -end Kubernetes cluster monitoring. Well, that's what we want. So let's click on that. And from here, we can install this app. Now these apps are Helm charts behind the scenes, but they've given you a nice UI to be able to install them. And to prove that, we can go into chart options and see all of the options that are filled out for us for this Helm install. Now, we don't need to change anything here. Rancher's already taken care of that. And if we go into Helm readme, we can see the readme for this Helm chart. And you could follow this documentation and install it without the UI, but today we're gonna use the UI. But just know, you can run this from a command line too and do a Helm install using this information. And then we have Helm deploy options, which looks like additional arguments for our Helm install. But like I said, we're not gonna do a CLI version of this install, we're gonna use their UI. So the only thing we'll need to do here is click install. Now I'm just gonna call this Rancher Monitoring. You can name this anything you like. Uh, but I'm gonna name it Rancher Monitoring just in case I install Prometheus in the future. That way I can identify that this is the Rancher version of Prometheus. So let's click install. And now you can see in our console window, it's actually going through and installing this for us. And if we look at these logs, we can see it's really just running the Helm command for us. You can see some of the Helm commands here that it's using. And here's the description I gave it, Rancher Monitoring. You can see it creating some additional resources, deleting some old resources that I had before because I installed this once before, recreating those resources, and now it's checking our actual deployment, and then recreating some more resources. And here we can see we have a successful install. So how do we view it now? Well, let's go back to this dropdown. Instead of being in the Apps and Marketplace section, let's go into the Monitoring section. And here we can see all of the services that were installed via Helm. And so, congratulations. We have Grafana, Alert Manager, and Prometheus already set up. And if we look at Grafana, it's already starting to collect metrics on our cluster. So while that's collecting data and making our charts and graphs really pretty, let's set up alerting with Alert Manager and Slack. So back in monitoring, we're actually going to go to receivers. Now I'll explain to you this terminology the way that I understand it but receivers are systems that receive these alerts. And we have a lot of predefined alerts already set up by Rancher. So let's configure a receiver and then we'll look at some of those metrics or alerts that will be sent to these receivers. So if we create a new receiver, we have options. So we have Slack, we have just a traditional webhook or an API endpoint, 
We have email and we have custom. Now I'm actually gonna choose Slack because it takes the least amount of infrastructure. And I use Slack already and it's installed on my phone and it's really easy to look at. But if you don't, it's super easy to set up your own Slack channel. But let's choose Slack and then we'll add Slack. And once you add Slack, it's going to ask you for really one thing. What's your incoming webhook? And so in Slack, you'll need to configure an incoming webhook so that your server can actually send this payload to the Slack service and then get it in one of your channels. So how do we set up a webhook? Well, let's click incoming webhooks. After clicking on that, that'll take you out to Slack and it'll show you this incoming webhook, kind of like an app. And you can add this webhook to your own server. So in the top right hand corner, you're gonna see which Slack server this is going to be added to. So after we choose our server, we'll click add to Slack. Then we'll pick a channel from our Slack server. I created a channel already called alerts and so we'll send it there. And so now we'll add this incoming webhooks integration to our Slack server. Once we have that, we'll wanna copy this webhook URL. Now keep this webhook URL a secret, treat it like a secret because with this webhook, anyone could send a payload to your Slack server. And if you don't want a bunch of random payloads or messages being sent to your Slack server, keep this secret. But you'll wanna copy this webhook URL and paste it into this receiver's config for Slack. Now, the default channel, we don't need to fill out. We've already picked a channel for this webhook, so we can skip that. And a proxy URL, we don't need to use unless you use an outgoing proxy within your Kubernetes cluster. So we'll skip that too. Next, we'll wanna click this box right here, enable send resolved alerts. And so what this does is actually send you an alert when the condition is resolved. So let's say you had a Kubernetes node that was down. Well, you would get the alert telling you it was down. And then eventually, if the node came back up, you would get the alert telling you that it was resolved because the node was back up. So I typically turn this on because you wanna know when your services recover. And the last thing we'll do is give this a name. I'm gonna keep this simple and just call it Slack. And as a quick note, you could actually fill out multiple receivers here. So if you wanted to create one alert for everything, you could, one for email, PagerDuty, OpsGenie, Webhook, any of these. But we're just gonna configure Slack for now. So after this is all set, we can create this. I've noticed that it creates a null row for some reason, but just ignore it. And now that we have our receiver, we can actually send alerts out now to this receiver. So to do that, let's go into routes. And so these are ways to route alerts to receivers. And you can create all different kinds of definitions for this, but we have one called root, and then we have one called root zero. Who knows why it created a root zero? but we have two that we can use. And so when any of our alert conditions are met, we're gonna send those conditions to this route, and this route is then going to map to this receiver we just created. So let's actually go to this root one, and we'll edit the config, and we'll choose the receiver now that we just set up, which is Slack, and we can save this. So this is the root route, the root root, or the root route, the route root. I'm going with the root route, but this is where all of our alerts will get routed and then sent to this receiver. And so what are those alerts? Now I said they had some set up already for us, so let's check those out. So we have Prometheus rules, and these are rules that are already set up for us. Rancher did this for us. And these are a combination of rules to record metrics and data, as well as send out the alert. So it's really cool. They have a metric set up, and then based off that metric, we can send out an alert. But really, we don't need to do anything here. I mean, you can change these or tune these if you like, but I think Rancher has a good handle on these, at least a better handle than what I do. So we won't touch anything there. And really, now we have monitoring and alerting set up. And now that we actually have that set up, we can see our alerts now in our Slack channel. So if we take a look at these, we can see that there's an alert firing and we can see some details about this alert. So it's firing, node exporter, node clock not synchronizing metrics. So something up with metrics not synchronizing and then names the pod and then names the warning. And the job is called node exporter. And we get a link right here to the actual alert, which is pretty cool. And we can actually show more information about this alert too. So we can see that, you know, this is just a warning, nothing critical. Shows the endpoint, shows the instance, shows the job, shows the job name, and a lot more information about that. But this is, Really awesome because now we can actually know 
when something goes wrong within our Rancher cluster. And if this issue gets resolved, we'll see it pop in with issue resolved. Now, I'm gonna warn you that there are lots of alerts, and we saw a lot of them here in the UI. And all of those alerts match rules within Prometheus, and they're all documented here. And you can choose whether or not to enable and disable these types of alerts. And you can actually reclassify them if you want to. So if we edit the configuration, and we thought that this severity level was not critical, and instead it was warning or none, we could do that. But I would recommend against changing anything in here and actually disabling the alert or fixing the actual problem when they pop up. And so now we have an alerting solution set up. So we talked about graphing in visualization and we set that up already. So let's check back and see if we have some more data on those charts. So if we go back to the dropdown for a cluster, choose monitoring again, go back to overview, and then choose Grafana. And now we can see we have some more information about our cluster. So this has been populating while we've been setting up all of our alerts. And you can see here, we have lots of dashboards set up already. So we have home, the one that we're on. We can look at all of the resources across our cluster, how much CPU is being used, how much is being requested, some of our limits, how much memory is being used. You could even see per namespace, the request for memory or CPU or bandwidth. And if we go back, we can see all of our nodes or our pods per node, see how much CPU usage they're using. And if we wanna see compute resources for our pods, we can see how much compute is being used, how much network is being used, how much bandwidth they're consuming. And if we wanna see the compute resources for our nodes per pod, we could check that out too. We could see all of our pods here, how much CPU they're using, how much memory they're using, and each individual pod as well. And you can zoom into this chart, look at a specific time range, drill in even further, and you can toggle your different nodes here. Now, this is a single node, so it only applies to this node, but if you had multiple nodes, you can select many or few. And we can do the same thing for networking as well. And we can see bytes received and bytes transmitted. And you can do this per namespace. So let's go to our default namespace where all of our pods are. You can see per pod. You can see these pods aren't very busy. Or you can change the resolution or the scope or the window in time. And you can see all of this from your dashboard as well. All of this is set up just by configuring alerting and monitoring within Rancher. We have a lot of pre-configured settings for alerts, for monitoring, and even for our dashboards. But you can create your own dashboards for this too, as well as alerts. And this is a great way to gain a lot of visibility into your cluster. And it's also worth noting too, as you add nodes or pods or any other Kubernetes resource, it will get automatically monitored too, which is super awesome. And if you think about it, all we had to do was install a Helm chart from Rancher. And this Helm chart was already pre-configured in the UI. So really, we only had to click about three buttons to get alerting and monitoring going. But don't let the simplicity of getting this configured disguise the fact that this is a really powerful tool. So I'm curious how you'll monitor your cluster, if you'll monitor your cluster, or if you use something else. Let me know in the comments section below. And if you found anything helpful in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Yeah, my lights are going. <laughs> Again, that was something else. If it's like this combination of like, okay, feedback from you guys, like, hey, it would be cool to change your lights. And I'm like, sweet, I would love to program that. I uh, just need the hardware. And then I went out and bought hardware and bought infrared stuff, built this open source project to share with people um, so that people can change the lights in here. And at the same time, then I can, I, I can do effects as well. You know, it's that, that intersection of, of just just hardware, software, services, and interaction that I, I just love. I just can't get enough of it. So anyways.